three quarterbacks in play. And Mike Elko said after uh, the game that uh, he likes that he has three quarterbacks that he can trust. And just to remind everybody out there, Connor Wakeman, the starting quarterback, injured uh, after eight touchdowns and two picks last year. And Marcel Reed played a few games as did uh, Jalen Henderson, who had the big uh, bowl game performance against Oklahoma State. So let's start there, Graham, in regards to the quarterback play. Yeah. Um, well, like you said, there was some inclement uh, weather, uh, and I do think that affected things more than anything for Connor Wigman, who, you know, he's going to be the starter. Uh, I think it would take a lot to unseat him. He uh, So they did a draft format for the, for the game, right? They had two team captains, Torian York, uh, linebacker, and Trey Zune, offensive lineman, and they – Apparently did some drafting, uh, and Wegman ended up on the white team uh, for uh, and, and Torian York drafted him. Uh, but Torian, I, I think, must have not thought until later in the draft to pick any receivers because Wegman didn't really have uh, the the uh, the top line presumed starters that he was throwing to, um, and so I think that affected his performance a little bit. And the other thing is Purdue transfer Nick Scorton, uh, defensive end. Almost every single play he was on the field, he was messing up the offense's plans. I mean, it was really impressive from him. Uh, and so Wigman didn't have a whole lot of time to throw um, and didn't have a whole lot of people to throw it to and didn't have uh, great conditions to throw it in. So that's kind of how you end up with the stat line he had. I don't think he even had um, 100 yards passing, maybe a little bit over that. But they tacked on a, uh, a touchdown at the end with a big run from Ruben Owens. Uh, what I did like from the quarterback position, Jalen Henderson had a couple of really great throws, including a, a great corner route to Noah Thomas um, in, in the end zone. Uh, that Noah extended great for that. Uh, it was a really impressive play. Marcel Reed, um, like you said, he, he had that one game in the Texas Bowl against Oklahoma State. He has continued to impress uh, his physical tools are really, I mean, you see why he was rated where he was. Um, but uh, he, it's just a matter of putting it all together. You know, uh, he's, he's still young, um, true sophomore. Well, I guess redshirt freshman at this point, uh, I should say. Uh, and so um, the, the future's bright. I really think Reed has a chance to be great. Henderson, I mean, I, I just feel great about him uh, as, as a backup, too. Uh, he brings a, a great element to the offense. He's, he's shown some some growth in his passing ability, I think. So do we have a quarterback battle? <laughs> uh, again, I don't think we quite have a battle. It's, it's tough to judge from just a spring game. You know, the other thing being offensive line, you're splitting up your starters between the two teams. And so it's going to be tough to get a great picture of is our protection actually good or is it actually really bad? Wegman definitely had fewer of the presumed starters on his side. Uh, and so uh, I think that probably contributed a little bit to him um, not having quite as much time. But as far as pure arm talent, I think he definitely still is head and shoulders above the rest. Still recovering a little bit from injury, too. I know these sound kind of like excuses, but I, I, I definitely do think it would take a lot for – for him to be unseated. Wigman five for 14 for the record, 47 yards. Uh, but also in addition to not having many receiving threats, as I understand it, he played behind the second team offensive line as well. So that's an issue. Uh, Noah Thomas, is he pretty much the new Anaya Smith? <laughs> well, um, if you're talking about someone reliable, he can go to down in and down out. I, I certainly hope so. Um, their physical profiles really couldn't be more different. Noah is, I think, six foot six. Um, and I mean, he's a burner too. And Anias, you know, he had short range speed. He, he had a lot of quickness. Noah is a track guy. I mean, he can really uh, get up and down the field really well. Um, and more than that, he's a go up and get it guy to the degree that I don't think A&M quite has had since they had Mike Evans on campus. So, and, and I don't mean that to, um, overinflate the expectations for Noah as as much as I mean you can throw it downfield you can throw it to the corner of the end zone he's going to battle for it to a higher degree than um than we've seen since number 13 was was out there in the maroon and white so 
receiver depth is an issue. If Thomas can emerge as sort of a really true number one threat, then I think that would be amazing for the Aggies. Um, he certainly showed uh, that he is on that track today, if you were judging just by by this game at least. So there was some thought that uh, in the latter years at Texas A&M, the last few, that Jimbo Fisher may have lost some control over the program, became a bit lax, and maybe some players were running the locker room to a certain extent, and maybe the hard work uh, – to the extent that it needs to be done at that level was had gone by the wayside. And I got to think that Mike Elko, you would think has reinstated a work ethic. Well, it certainly seems like it. Um, you know, I'm not out there at practice every day or, or anything like that, or, or even one of the many days, but from, from what I understand, uh, it, it definitely seems like there is a new standard um, that wasn't there before. And, I think I mentioned this maybe last time I was on. We felt making the transition from Sumlin to Jimbo, that hard work was kind of coming in, the new attitude and all this sort of thing. And I think maybe the length of time that Jimbo was there and certain other factors played into kind of the, the decline you're speaking of. But Elko, is he's a different guy than Jimbo. He, I think, is a little more comfortable delegating things, first of all, um, and a little more comfortable... Um, well, to say it another way, he he's very detail oriented, and that goes down to you're going to do this rep right in practice, or you know you were we're going to keep doing. It. You're not just going to go through the motions, right? Uh, and so, I do think there is a different level of discipline, expectation as far as showing up to different meetings, showing up to practices, even if you are one of the star players. Um, and again, this is just through the grapevine stuff. Uh, that it seems like, I mean, it has had um, what would seem to be some casualties of that as well with certain players uh, entering the, the transfer portal uh, and, and that type of thing um, who uh, did not fare as well. Some casualties on that end, but I do think what you'll see is a much more disciplined team, much more technically sound team, especially on the offensive line and at defensive back, which are two of the positions, I think, they struggled at most uh, last year as far as sort of technique versus talent. So at this point, Graham, do we have any news in the in the uh, significant news? Uh, I've seen a few Texas A&M players in the portal. Uh, one, of course, uh, you had a player, a wide receiver, who caught one pass for a touchdown last year, went to Kentucky, and he's back in the portal. But obviously he had already left. But uh, in regards to actual news or – what I guess I, we could consider to be reasonable expectation or reasonable speculation about uh, connections with certain players. We're starting to see with the transfer portal opening on Tuesday in the latter portion of the week, a lot of visits being uh, announced of where players are taking those visits. Um, yeah, well, we had a commitment today from a center from Utah uh, I will not try to pronounce his name, uh, but it, uh, it, he's a really good player from uh, from what I understand. Not saying that I'm, you know, the czar of all things Utah football, but they do have a reputation for a physical offensive line. Um, we hosted uh, this weekend, or I think are going to host tomorrow, Keandre Lambert Smith from Penn State, a uh, big time receiver, uh, Elijah Badger from Arizona State. Um, we've been connected to him. Um, as far as outgoing transfers, if that's what you're asking about, Jacoby Matthews is the biggest name of the spring window. He's a safety five-star, well, high four-star, low five-star guy, depending on where you looked, was a battle between LSU, Texas, and A&M. Had some good moments, but um, sort of, uh, I guess, wasn't as much vibing with kind of the new culture and, and things that Elko had brought in. So he's one who's on the way out. Sam McCall, who had transferred him from Florida State, got – minimal playing time. He's on the way out. And a couple of guys who came in during the winter window, and, and I guess we're just going to have to get used to this in the way college football works now, come in in the winter window, try out for spring camp, and if you don't like where you're at, you head out in the spring window. So Alex Howard, linebacker from Youngstown State, he's on the way out. Derek Graham, I believe from FAU, uh, maybe from Troy. Um, there's We got one from FAU, one from Troy, and I, I get them mixed up. But he's on the way out. Um, and uh, O-lineman, 
Um, and yeah, that's just kind of strange to see him come onto campus uh, months ago and then turn around and head out. So uh, as far as I know, that's that's kind of the action we've seen so far. The Aggies are definitely hoping to add a few more uh, depth pieces and perhaps a starting piece specifically at wide receiver during this window. Graham, you're hitting on the thing that is the most recent that irks me. And that's exactly what you just laid out. Players leaving a particular school, in this case, after the 2023 season. So in December, January, they make a move, they make a transfer, they go to another school. They don't stay there for at least one season. They're out after the spring window. And to me, uh, something needs to be done immediately there. I am completely in favor of uh, player movement, freedom of choice, freedom of opportunity, freedom of movement, all of that um, to a certain extent, of course. There should be some responsibility or accountability. And all that particular player in that situation is doing is draining resources from the football program and the university. They are being pursued. They're taking a visit, travel time, money, being courted. They're signing a transfer, whatever the procedure and documents involved there. They're signing a scholarship. They're receiving all this, their administrative costs. They're eating their food. They're working out. They're wearing their gear for four weeks, six weeks, three months, whatever the case might be, and then they're leaving. And maybe even on top of that, they had just taken reps from somebody else in spring practice that would have benefited from the reps and the team benefited from somebody else having the reps uh, this coming season. Now, saying all that, I'm not faulting the players because they're just taking advantage of what the system is. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a crazy deal that we've sort of backed ourselves into here in college football. When I say we, the NCAA uh, has, has backed themselves into as far as the system they've set up. You know, it's, it's weird. It's different. I, I don't think, I mean, if I had to guess that this would be the, the way it's going to be for very long, because I think a lot of people have the sense that you and I do that this really is not tenable in a long term, uh, you know, long term looking forward. But um, in the here and now, you have to have a coach and an organization that embraces how things are now, how they are going to be after the next change. And I think Mike Elko and the organization he has built definitely do do that. And that's great news for a and um, in, in sort of, well, maybe I should say the silver lining to the dark cloud that is the way college sports are kind of becoming as far as this sort of uh, situation that's growing increasingly untenable by the day. He is uh, Graham Harmon. You can catch him on Giggum Gazette. Uh, there you see all the notables right there, giggumgazette.com and uh, the X handle right there. Anything in particular people should be looking out for? Well, I mean, I'll have some content up about the spring game. Looking forward to the offseason. Um, and in baseball, number one in the country. So we'll have a lot of stuff up about them. Hopeful to make a College World Series run. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Pretty soon here, we'll be starting our opponent previews in depth uh, for the for the upcoming season. So exciting times. All right, Graham. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mark.